it's kind of contradictory, but tea ceremony actually teaches us minimalism. Not only minimalism in <coughs> objects and in possessions, as for example is portrayed with the rustic tea hut. Such a hut is um, created out of clay, some basic um, parts of um, wood structure, um, papered wooden doors, um, etc. So the material is very primitive and um, very um, rustic, very minimal. Now that does sound a little bit uh, contradictory to what we're used to well, in a contemporary uh, setting because building such a tea hut in a contemporary, well, nowadays will cost a fortune. And the reason for that is basically that the materials that once were primitive and um, were more commonly used then than now have now actually become um, not only rare and expensive but also the techniques that were used to build those um, tea huts for example um, have become less practiced so there's less craftsmen who can actually do it and make it so in a contemporary setting tea ceremony has become something that seemingly may be quite um, quite um, large and grand and expensive and um, prestigious but in essence it actually teaches us minimalism and to work with the basic materials we have and that also is um, shown in the utensils we use we only select a basic set of items that are necessary to prepare the tea and that is what we prepare the tea with so we don't look for greater possessions or um, greater um, items or more items um, however that certain tea practitioners like the great um, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, for example, who favored a golden uh, tea hut, um, may have pursued such um, interests. But in essence, it is minimal. And now I've only spoken about um, minimalism in possession, but tea ceremony also teaches us minimalism in sound, minimalism in movement and that in itself is actually very relaxing and very therapeutic so that tea ceremony actually becomes a form of meditation movement in the room in the tea room is limited to um, only the necessary sounds for someone for example outside of the room to hear what is going on inside but not be too loud um, using the ladle for example you try not to tap anything or make um, as least sound as possible you try not to bulk and push um, the air out with a popping sound when you prop the ladle in the, the cauldron to actually um, scoop up a ladle of hot water. Um, when you put the tea with the tea scoop in the tea bowl, you try not to make too many tapping sounds or scorching sounds when um, the, you um, bring the tea scoop in contact with the tea bowl. And all those things are um, they require a lot of attention and focus in order to be able to um, not unwillingly, for example, make unnecessary sounds. So a lot of focus is placed on trying to do things as quietly, as softly, as gently as possible and also do that in 
as few movements necessary. So also unnecessary movements are abbreviated or um, everything is calculated in order to only make as much movements as possible as to make it a continuous flow of one service. And doing all that and understanding all that and becoming aware of the simplicity in such a well grand looking ceremony or grand looking rite actually um, makes us more aware of the things that are around us and also soothes and relaxes our body and mind which um, in effect is somewhat a form of meditation. Thank you for watching today's episode.